Have you ever wondered what could push a person to lead a rebellion against an entire empire? What conditions could drive someone like Yemelian Pugachev to such extreme measures? Let's delve into the turbulent era of the Pugachev Rebellion, a time when the Tsardom of Russia was in a state of unrest. The late 18th century was a period marked by wars, disease and economic hardship. The common people, particularly the peasantry, bore the brunt of these dire circumstances. They were trapped in a cycle of poverty, their plight worsened by the privileges bestowed upon the Dvorians, the Russian nobility. This disparity in wealth and power, coupled with widespread dissatisfaction, created a tinderbox of social discontent ready to ignite at any moment. Enter Yemelian Pugachev, a Cossack with a formidable past. Having fought against Prussia and the Turks, Pugachev was no stranger to conflict. Yet his battles were not confined to the battlefield alone. He was a fugitive, a man on the run, who found himself at the heart of a brewing storm. Pugachev, in his audacity, claimed to be the third Peter, a rightful heir to the Russian throne. This bold proclamation resonated with many, and he amassed a force of 25,000 strong. Among his followers were the Bashkirs and Tatars, groups marginalized by the Russian Empire. Their participation in the rebellion signaled a growing disillusionment with the Empire and a desire for change. While the capital was preoccupied with wars and political manoeuvring, Pugachev's rebellion grew stronger. He capitalized on this distraction, rallying his forces and setting his sights on the city of Yaik, now known as Ural. In such a turbulent time, a figure like Yemelian Pugachev found himself at the center of the storm, ready to challenge the mighty Russian Empire. As we move forward, we'll explore how this rebellion took shape and the impact it had on the course of Russian history. As the center of the empire was distracted by wars, Pugachev saw his opportunity. But how did he manage to rally such a large force behind him? In the midst of the tumultuous times, Yemelian Pugachev, a Cossack who had fought against Prussia and the Turks, saw an opportunity. He declared himself as the deposed Tsar Peter III, a claim that was as audacious as it was clever. You see, Peter III had been popular among the serfs and the lower classes. By assuming his identity, Pugachev was not only staking a claim to the throne, but also aligning himself with the people's discontent. The audacious claim resonated with the people who were desperate for change. They rallied behind Pugachev, their numbers swelling into the tens of thousands. As word of his rebellion spread, it reached the ears of the Bashkirs and the Tatars. These groups, disenchanted with the Russian rule, saw in Pugachev the promise of a better future and joined his cause further strengthening his force. The Bashkirs and Tatars, who had long been subjects of the Russian Empire, were eager to shake off the yoke of their oppressors. Their involvement in the rebellion was significant. Not only did they bolster Pugachev's forces, but they also brought a new dimension to the rebellion. Their participation was a clear sign that the rebellion was not just a bid for power, but a broad-based movement that sought to challenge the social and political order of the day. So, there you have it. In a time of widespread discontent and unrest, Pugachev seized the moment. He cleverly positioned himself as a figure of hope and change, rallying a force of 25,000 people. His audacious claim to be Peter III, the involvement of the Bashkirs and Tatars, and the sheer scale of his rebellion, all combined to make the Pugachev Rebellion a historical event of great significance. With a force behind him, Pugachev was ready to challenge the might of the Russian Empire. With a force of 25,000, Pugachev marched towards Yaik. But what was the outcome of this daring move? In the heart of the rebellion, the audacious Cossack leader Yemelian Pugachev having rallied the Bashkirs and Tatars, set his eyes on Yaik, now known as the Ural region. This audacious move was not without its risks, but Pugachev was a man fueled by ambition and the burning desire for freedom. His army, a formidable force of 25,000, was a diverse coalition of rebels, ready to challenge the might of the Russian Empire. As they marched towards Yaik, their path was strewn with both triumphs and tribulations. The rebels managed to seize numerous fortresses along the Volga River, bolstering their morale and adding to their ranks. The victories were sweet, but they were not without their costs. 
The Russian Empire, although embroiled in wars, was not a force to be trifled with. Its military might was immense and its retaliation swift and brutal. The march towards Yaik was a test of endurance, courage and unity for Pugachev's troops. It was a journey that brought them face to face with the harsh realities of war. They encountered setbacks, suffered losses and faced the wrath of a formidable adversary. But it was also during this march that the spirit of the rebellion was truly tested. Successes were met with enthusiasm, failures with resilience. The march towards Yaik was a testament to the rebels' unyielding spirit and their unwavering commitment to their cause. It was a march that embodied the essence of the Pugachev rebellion, a relentless pursuit of freedom and a challenge to an oppressive regime. Despite the trials and tribulations, the march towards Yaik was a significant milestone in the Pugachev rebellion. It was a march that symbolized the strength and determination of the rebels, and it was a march that echoed their desire for freedom and justice. Despite the odds, Pugachev's rebellion continued to challenge the might of the Russian Empire. Every rebellion has its end. How did the Pugachev rebellion meet its downfall? As the winds of revolt blew across Russia, the once mighty Pugachev rebellion began to lose its momentum. The decisive turn of events unfolded in the year 1774. After a series of successful onslaughts, Pugachev's force of 25,000, including Bashkirs and Tatars, began to waver. The central authority, previously preoccupied with wars, turned its attention towards quelling the uprising. By the late summer of 1774, Pugachev found himself cornered. The Tsarina's forces, led by General Michelson, had managed to regroup and launched a relentless pursuit of the rebel leader. Despite his attempts to rally his forces, Pugachev was captured near the Yake River in September of the same year. His capture was a devastating blow to the rebellion, effectively draining it of its lifeblood. Pugachev, the man who had once stood against the might of the Russian Empire, was brought to Moscow in chains. Following a public trial, he was sentenced to death. On January 21, 1775, Pugachev met his end on the executioner's block. His execution was a public spectacle, a stern message from Catherine the Great to any who dared challenge her authority. But Pugachev's death did more than just quell a rebellion. It marked a turning point in Russian history. The rebellion had revealed the deep-seated discontent among the peasantry and the Cossacks, a reality that the Russian monarchy could no longer ignore. This led to significant reforms in the years that followed, in an attempt to prevent such a rebellion from happening again. With Pugachev's execution, the rebellion met its end. But the effects of this rebellion were far from over. The echoes of the Pugachev rebellion would reverberate through the corridors of Russian history, shaping the nation's future in ways that no one could have anticipated. And while Pugachev's rebellion may have met its end, its legacy was just beginning. The Pugachev rebellion left a lasting impact on the Russian Empire. But what exactly were these effects? In the aftermath of the rebellion, the landscape of the Russian Empire was dramatically altered. The rebellion, fueled by the discontent of the peasants and the Cossacks, had exposed the cracks in the seemingly impregnable facade of the Tsarina's rule. The Empire was forced to acknowledge the discontent brewing in its vast expanses. This acknowledgement led to significant changes. One of the most notable was the establishment of the Mufti of Russian Muslims in 1789, a position created to oversee the religious affairs of the Muslim population within the Empire. This was a direct consequence of the participation of Muslims in the rebellion. The Empire, in an attempt to placate this section of the populace, not only established the Mufti, but also granted them the freedom to build mosques and madrasas. This was a significant step, signalling an increased acceptance of religious diversity within the empire. Yet the rebellion's impact extended beyond these immediate changes. It was a powerful reminder of the potential of the common people to rise against oppression, a lesson not lost on future generations. It holds the dubious honour of being the second largest rebellion in Russian history, surpassed only by the Stenka Razin Rebellion. This scale is a testament to the widespread discontent and the desire for change that had permeated the empire. 
The rebellion also left a lasting legacy on the Russian psyche. The name Pugachev became synonymous with resistance and rebellion. Even though Pugachev himself met a tragic end, his spirit of defiance lived on, inspiring future revolts and uprisings. The Pugachev Rebellion, a testament to the power of the people, left an indelible mark on the history of Russia, reminding us of the potential for change even against the mightiest of empires.